you glad? Aren't you so glad that he's a chain breaker this morning? Amen. So good to be in God's house today on this special Mother's Day Sunday. Let's give all our mothers a hand in the house this morning. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day to you all. Where would we be without all these mamas? I can tell you right now, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> As they give birth to you, praise God, hallelujah. God's so good this morning. We appreciate the Lord. So good to see all of our folks with us this morning, family members, visitors. God bless you, amen. May the Lord just touch you and, and touch your life today. I'm looking for God to do special things in this house, amen. We've got some that are with family, and you come to be with family, kind of a smorgasbord this morning, amen. But I want to tell our live stream, hey, especially Sister Edith, the mother that takes care of these two guys right here on the front row. Sister Edith's watching all the way from California. She's out there giving vaccinations. Amen. We love you, Sister Edith. Happy Mother's Day. All the rest of our mama, Sister Liz Kirkman, Granny June, all the above. Amen. We love you all so much. Amen. We appreciate you. Would you stand with me all over the house and let's open up in prayer this morning and just ask God to help us and touch our lives. I promise you this. By what I feel in the Spirit of God, God really wanting to help somebody this morning. I, I pray that you take this service very seriously, very seriously. Amen. I, I, I've just, I've been, I've been just quivering under the power of God this morning all through Sunday school. I said, God, you're all over me here. I've got to deliver this message. God's got a word for you this morning. Amen. And we want to celebrate, be with our mother. Man, what a beautiful day God's given us to worship Amen, Him. Brother. It is beautiful today. <laughs> Wonderful day. The only thing I saw that was bad was two love bugs on that white door over there. I said, get out of here in Jesus' name. Them love bugs. Praise God. God's good. Happy Mother's Day to all our mothers. I love you guys so much. We got good women at this church. Amen. And we appreciate you this morning. Let's open up prayer. Ask Jesus to touch our lives in a mighty way. Father, we love you. We're so thankful to be here in your house. God, it's such a blessing, an honor, and a privilege. God, that you got us out of bed this morning. You give us breath in our lungs. You, God, give us energy, God, and strength. God, and your grace is there, God, to help us. You give us that that we can worship you with today. I pray let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. I pray, God, that you'd inhabit our praises, God, in this house. Bless you people today. Bless our, our mothers in particular, God, today as we honor our mothers. God, we love our mamas here at this church. We've got great women of God here at this church. I thank you for them. Bless all the mothers that are with us today, God. I, God, we know so many great women. I thank you for great women, God. God, we just thank you for what you're going to do in this service. We just ask that we do all this in Jesus' name, God, that you would just touch and minister like only you can. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's sing some songs this morning. Brother Ken's going to come and lead us in some congregationals. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord this morning. Happy Mother's Day. Praise God. Going to sing Old Rugged Cross. Thank the Lord for what he done on that cross for us. Praise the Lord. Let's just worship God this morning. Glory. Hallelujah. I love 
the Lord. Thank God for that old rugged cross. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before we take up our tithes and offerings, amen, I want to, uh, the church wants to bless the uh, mothers uh, that are here today. Amen. I've gotten with some of my young men. Young men, come on up that I got with this time. Amen. Come on, Brother Leo, come over this way. Hand me this box down here. Y'all hand me this box. Set it right up here. We've got a little something, something for the ladies of the church. Praise the Lord. I want to bless you with this. I think you're going to like this, ladies. Your own welcome church bag. Amen. Ain't that cool? Looks good, don't it? I told, I told Sister Becky, I said, I might want a man bag. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. So, ladies, amen, make sure these, these boys get you your bag this morning. Amen. Guys, make sure you hit all the mothers up. Praise the Lord. Amen. We appreciate our mothers. Amen. Yeah. Make sure they don't pass you by. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
Amen. God's good. Amen. I thought them were pretty cool. Amen. Gentlemen, you ain't going to be left out. Wait till you see what we got coming for Father's Day. It's going to be just as cool. Amen. I'm excited about what the Lord's doing. Amen. Appreciate these young men helping me out this morning. Give these young men a hand. Praise God. Junior Deacon Training Program going on right here. Praise God. Amen. Let me make several announcements while they're getting these handed out. Praise God to you ladies. Um, I remember, some, something's going on this weekend coming up. Does anybody know what's going on around here? This What is it, Sister Peggy? Cake auction for youth camp. Cake auction for youth camp. <laughs> All right. Sister Peggy, love for you to come out and be with her. Amen. Um, this Sunday night, okay, 6 p.m., Sunday night, make sure you, you bring a lawn chair if you got it, amen. If not, we'll have other chairs out there. We're going to do it out under the canopy on this side by the Kirkman building. Uh, it'll be all outdoors. Uh, we're going to have, we're going to serve you uh, hot dogs and hamburgers. We're going to grill out, have supper ready for you, nachos and cheese, stuff like that. Amen. We'll just accept donations on that. We'll have a donation box. Usually we do a spaghetti dinner, but we want to mix it up this year. And also, when we get you settled, get you done kind of eating during that, we're going to let you go in there, amen. When you first get here, you'll pick out what cake you want. You can check out the cakes. They'll be inside the, the children's church area. And uh, we'll, you can write your numbers down, which ones you want to bid on, things like that. And we'll bring them out one by one. I'll have some cake runners. And we're going to do a little auctioning around here. I hopefully we'll have at least 40, 50 cakes to bid on. Amen. Last time we done it, I think it was 60-something. And I was about to die at the end of it, auctioneering all them off. So 40 or 50 would be plenty, praise God. But uh, we want to raise money, send our kids to youth camp. Amen. So uh, grab somebody, bring them with you. Say, come on, come to a cookout with me. Maybe you can get something sweet in the process. Amen. So uh, give the Lord a hand for that. I'm ready to do that. Excited about it. Ladies, amen. All you, you nice ladies, these wonderful Mother's Day. I got you that bag so you can bring a cake Sunday night now. I got to have some cakes to auction off. Bring your, bring your favorite cake you want to bake. If you want to bake a couple of them, that's fine as well. Amen. Um, we'll auction it off. And thank you for, for donating your time and talent on that. Just bring it that afternoon, okay? Uh, if you bring them that morning, if they're non-refrigerated, we could stick them in the Kirkman building over there, okay? We'll be limited space on refrigerated cakes for that morning drop-off, okay? All right? Remember, no PM service tonight. Go be with your family. Be with your mamas. Have dinner with them. Treat them right. Amen. Spend time with mama today, amen, or a family or friend member, amen, a nice lady in your neighborhood. You say, well, my mama ain't around. We'll find somebody in your neighborhood that you want to go be with and bless them, amen. amen. Share the love of God with somebody today, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So don't forget all this cool stuff going on. If you would, uh, if you're interested in our nursing home ministry down at Willow Creek Assisted Living Facility, uh, they have certain slots left. The sign-up sheet's on the back bulletin board. That will be on Monday, May 17th, okay? Uh, they, they only have a certain amount that can go, so please sign your name up if you're interested in that, okay? Remember, they require you wear a mask in there. They've got certain protocols, so if you've got any more questions about that, see Brother Ken's sister to Peggy. Amen. They'd love to talk to you about that ministry. Amen. All right. Give me some ushers this morning. Brother Michael, would you come up? Amen. Uh, who else? Tell me. Brother Bobby, you help him out on this side. Amen. Praise the Lord. Got some men visiting their mamas today. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a good day to be with your mama. Amen. If your mama's still around, need to be with her. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I got my mama here. Amen. Amen. She's they nicknamed her Better Late Than Never Cruise. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Me and Aunt Vita were getting worried. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I just love the Lord this morning. I, I love picking on my mama. And y'all y'all all thinking it, I know. Like, boy, he must get it after service, don't he? <laughs> you better believe it, buddy. See, you five of these across you, you know, coming across. So, but I love my mama. I appreciate her. Amen. She's, she's a good woman. Amen. Praise God. Put up with me. You got to be good. Amen. Let's take up this morning's tithes and offerings. Give as the Lord's blessed you to do. Um, after Sister Addie is going to sing a special this morning after offering, and uh, after she sings that special, she's going to be jetting back over to Children's Church. Children's Church is going on this morning, ages 4 to 10 over there. So if you've got a kid that like to go, 
Uh, make sure they go with Addie and David will whistle over to them. I don't know they're going to be at the front door and we'll see that they get over there. There'll be no nursery children's church this morning. Uh, try to give Sister Evie the day off. She wouldn't take it. Give Sister Sarah the day off. I, I forced it on her, amen. I told her, no, you ain't doing that this morning. But the nursery is open if you need to take your children back there as well, okay? You're more than welcome to do that. Brother Bobby, just a blessing over the offer this morning, please, sir. thankful to have my Aunt Vita with us this morning too. She moved down here several months ago from South Carolina. Amen. Appreciate her being here this morning. She's a mother of many as well. And uh, good to have uh, my, my mother-in-laws with me this morning. Sister Cheryl, Sister Lisa, love you guys. Appreciate all you, you do. Uh, our family, Aunt Val, a wonderful mother as well. And our Mima's back there. Amen today as well. And I appreciate Mima. I love her so much. And I appreciate her walk with the Lord, how she she leads in her family. Amen. And I appreciate it. And also, I would love to thank my beautiful wife this morning, being a wonderful mother. Wonderful mother. She brought this wonderful little girl into the world. It's going to bless you and sing for you this morning. Worship along with them. Come on, let's let God have his way this morning.
Aren't you glad Jesus is there for you in your darkest times? Come on. Amen. Book of Acts, chapter number 27. Book of Acts 27. Yes, ma'am. Real quick. Go ahead. Come on. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, praise God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. That's a good praise report, sis. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. God can sober you up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Acts 27, verse number 39. When you get there, let's stand for the reading of God's word. I'm going to try to just obey God this morning. I'm not going to keep you very long. Amen. I, I know you got the, the, some people got kids with them this morning and all, and, and you got mamas with you and all, and a big day planned. Amen. But we're going to take time for what thus saith the Lord this morning. Amen. Acts 27 and 39. If you're there, say amen. And the Bible says this. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded if it were possible to thrust in the ship. When they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoised up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable. But the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves, and the soldiers' uh, counsel was to kill the prisoners." lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest on some boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land." I want to preach to you this morning, amen, a message entitled, and it's a question to you personally this morning. Take it personal because it's to you and it's to me as well. Are you going to sink or are you going to swim? Are you going to sink or are you going to swim? Father, I love you. I thank you for the, God, all of our folks being out today. I thank you for this congregation. I thank you, Lord God, for our, our, our wonderful women that are here today, God, representing this church. Thank you, Lord, for all those that have come out to be with you today. And I pray, God, for your anointing, God. I, I feel you so strong up here, God. You want to speak, God. Speak to our hearts. Deal with our soul. God, I pray that you'd save, heal, deliver, set free. Fill with the Spirit of God this morning. Do whatever you want to do. And I pray, God, let us just step aside and let you take over. God, preach through me, God. Talk, talk through me, God, I pray. God, not my will, but thine be done. Bless your people this morning. Bless our altar service in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning. Amen. Are you going to sink or are you going to swim? Amen. We find this is the happening of the Apostle Paul when uh, he is bound to go to Rome, amen, for preaching the gospel. They found him guilty of preaching the good news, amen, pretty much, just to sum it up. Uh, God has let him know that uh, Jesus spoke to him that you're going to go to Rome and you're going to uh, uh, there preach to Caesar, amen, the ruler of that whole empire of that day, amen. And, and Paul, he's on this journey here. He's in chains. He's in shackles. He's bound up uh, in imprisonment, and they're, they're setting sail and, and, and this is a, a odd time of the year when there weren't a lot of storms so you think they'd have smooth sailing, amen uh, if I've done my study correctly the time of year that it was uh, there was not a lot of uh, tempt, temptuous uh, storms there uh, in the region but here they're going to set sail to Rome and go on this journey there's about probably over around 275 men on this boat and uh, they're, they're sailing along and all of a sudden Paul let them know uh, before 
before they got started, he said, he said, I, I perceive that God's warned me that there's going to be a, uh, this is going to be a perilous journey, that we're going to have uh, tough times and it's going to be bad. I don't think we should go right now. But nevertheless, that centurion listened uh, uh, to the ship master, the captain, and uh, he said, no, we need to just go ahead and go. So they, they launched off. They didn't take heed to the warning of God that the apostle Paul had originally spoken. But thanks be unto God as Paul had been fasting and others with him uh, on these fast days that they had. And, uh, you know, he'd been fasting, seeking God. Uh, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, though the storm was raging and uh, the ship was being tattered and torn and just being broken up. And, and, and nobody, that had they had fear upon their lives that they weren't going to make it. Uh, the angel of the Lord came to the apostle Paul and let him know that I've told you you're going to Rome. You're going to get there and nobody's going to perish either. Praise God. God, thank God. God gives you comfort in the midst of a storm. Amen. That ain't the message this morning, but it feels good anyhow. Praise God. Uh, we find here that this storm just continued on, beating this boat, uh, just slamming it around. And they, they came close uh, to a certain island. We know it as Melita in the next chapter, or Malta if you want to pronounce it that way. Amen. That they were going to be cast on this island. But, you know, they're facing shipwreck. They're facing this boat being tore up and, and beat around and, and just battered and torn and the things falling apart. Amen. And we find that uh, they, they've, they've hoisted their anchors out. They're just trying to, to manage the storm. Uh, they're, they're getting into a rocky area. They've never uh, uh, landed on this island before. They don't know how shallow it is. They, uh, the captain's in disarray. And we find here, amen, that this gets us to the point we're at in our, our text here. Uh, they've already uh, let off some of the weight of the boat. They've tossed the grain overboard. They've tossed all, all a lot extra ropes, everything that they had to toss over, nets, things like that, just to try to make it. Amen. But this boat is going down, folks. Amen. This boat is going to be shipwrecked. Amen. Paul knew it. Amen. The men of the boat knew it to, to a certain extent here when it's being broken and the hinder part was broken with the waves crashing into it. The boat just got ripped in half. Something's got to take place or they're all going to die. They're all going to perish. Amen. I just, it's a simple thought, a very simple, amen. God wanted to keep it simple this morning, amen. It said, amen, that they which could swim cast themselves first into the sea to get to the land. I'm going to tell you, folks, amen, if they didn't swim, if they didn't stay afloat, amen, they would have drowned. They wouldn't have just suffered shipwreck. They would have sunk down to the bottom of that sea and to never be remembered any longer, amen. It's a terrible thing to drown, amen. But I, I thought about this, amen, as Paul's going on this journey, amen, thank God they were safe. Everybody made it to the island of Melita there. Amen. If these wouldn't have started swimming though and taking action, they would have drowned, folks. Amen. When the ship is going down, you got to start swimming or you're going to go to rock bottom. Amen. I'm here to tell somebody this morning, amen, your ship's already crashed. Your ship's already been wrecked. Sin's already wrecked your life and messed you up. Amen. It beat you to death. Amen. My goodness. Hallelujah. But are you going to sink? Are you going to drown? Are you going to start swimming this morning in Jesus Christ. Are you going to sink or are you going to swim? Amen. It's up to you. Praise God. Amen. If you're not willing to fight and swim and make it to heaven and make heaven your first priority in your life and get your rotten, miserable self out the way, amen, you're going to drown. Amen. The enemy of this world is going to choke you out and he's going to take you down to the deepest of seas never to be remembered any longer. Your name won't be in the Lamb's book of life. It won't be found there. I don't care how many good works you think you've done. If you don't start swimming in the right direction. If you don't get to that island that's heaven's green shores, hallelujah, you're not going to make it. We know what to do, but we choose not to do it. It's kind of like this. I've been teaching my kids, trying to teach them how to swim. Good thing to know how to do. Just like we teach you how to fight the devil in this church. And we disciple you. We try to get you to come to Sunday school. Some of you won't, but we try anyhow. Amen, Pastor. That's good preaching whether you say it or not. Amen. Because you, well, I don't want you drowning. I'm going to teach you how to swim. 
Come on, somebody. I was teaching Addie the other day. We was in, in a little pool there. Amen. I was teaching her. She said, Daddy, I, how, do I, how do I swim? You know, they just used to the shallow end. And she's sitting there, you know, and I'll tell, I'll start out with floating, okay? I said, let's just float a little bit, sissy. You know, they doggy paddle a little, little bit, this and that. But she's sitting there floating, and I remember telling her, I said, honey, amen, you got to take a deep breath in. And when you go to exhale, amen, you ain't going to float no more. You're going to sink because you ain't got no air in your lungs to keep you buoyant. Amen. Amen. Just the simple facts of swimming. Amen. And, and I told her, I said, take that deep breath in, and you can kind of relax and chill out. Amen. But there's going to come a time when you've got to exhale, and you've got to release that. That to get more, more good oxygen in and let that carbon dioxide go out of you. Amen. You got to exhale. But when you do, you got to paddle those little feet. You got to, amen, swivel them hands to keep yourself afloat. Amen. If you don't swim, you will sink. You will drown. Amen. Hallelujah. Sissy, amen. She ain't quite got it yet, but she's starting to learn. Amen. She, every time she'd go to exhale, she'd go to sinking down. Water coming that nose. Water coming that mouth. I said, dear Lord, honey, you better learn how to keep that head above water. I'm going to tell you, some of you in this house this morning, you're taking on water. I said, you're taking on water. You're drowning, amen. You ain't getting no air in your lungs, and it's filling up with water. There's many that's here today. They already sunk. They already drowned, amen. Hallelujah. I can't find them any longer. They're in the bottom of an ocean, amen. I'm going to take God to pull you up out of that, praise God. But while you're still afloat, while you ain't made it to hell yet, amen, you're still floating, amen. you got to start paddling. You better start kicking. You better start swimming. <sighs> You ain't in hell yet, so I'm going to preach to you. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm so glad somebody preached to me. Hallelujah. Amen. I ain't made it to heaven yet either, so I better keep fighting. I better keep swimming. I better keep floating. Come on, somebody. I ain't arrived yet either. Amen. He said, they that endure to the end, that same that swim to the end, shall, come on now, inherit eternal life. Amen. We ain't arrived yet. Praise God. Hallelujah. I thought about that with Sissy, and I thought about this. Amen. Hallelujah. With how the devil does some people. Amen. How he done me and as a young man. In verse 42 it says the soldiers counseled to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim out and escape. I'm going to tell you there's a soldier after you. There's an enemy and an adversary after you. He never wants you to start swimming. He never wants you to start paddling. He never wants you to start kicking. Come on now. He never wants you to get saved. He never wants you to get delivered. He never wants you to get set free. He never wants you to get loose in the Holy Ghost. He never wants you to experience a move of God in your life. He never wants you to hear the word of God so that you'd have faith in it, amen. He never wants you to get started. Those soldiers were about to kill all the prisoners. Oh, but it says, but the centurion, my goodness, but the centurion, oh, hallelujah. I thought about this, amen. That centurion, there's a greater than that centurion. Come on now, his name's Jesus Christ. It said that centurion was willing to save Paul. And it saved everybody else. Come on now. I'm going to tell you this morning, somebody willing to save you. And it ain't Pastor Lance. It ain't Sister Nicole. ain't Brother Cain. ain't Brother Hal. ain't Brother Ken. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. He is willing to wash your sins away. He is willing to pick you up. He is willing, amen, hallelujah, to throw you a life preserver. He's willing, amen, to give you a helping hand. Praise God. If you'll just let him this morning. Oh, God, help us today. Amen. You know, it's a terrible thing to almost drown. Anybody ever had a near-death experience in that this morning? To almost drown, if you had, you, 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 your heart probably be racing time. I'm done with this little point here. I can remember when I almost drowned one time. I don't even know if Mama knows about it. Amen. I didn't tell her. I was afraid to mess her day up. Amen. I'm afraid she'd give me five of these. You know? I'm afraid she'd get on me. I, I'd rather drown than face that pretty woman there. Come on now, that little woman. Woo, glory to God. Amen. I can remember down by that river, that St. Mary's River. Amen. We'd go down there and go. We had a little swing. We'd swing off a rope, me and my buddy. We'd catfish down there, and then we'd get hot. We'd jump in and go clean the fish later. Come on now. Just river life. Hallelujah. Amen. We just, we just there, and all of a sudden, amen, I can remember a time when I, I got out a little bit too far. Come on now. I got in the middle of that river, and the river was up high. And I can remember, amen, I got out there in the deep end. And I started getting out there, and I, I, I started panicking. And, and, I, and I went down to go to the bottom. You know, you get bottom in a river swimming. You just get bottom or in a pool. You can shove yourself back up, gasp a little bit of air, and float a little bit. Amen, that was just the plan. Well, that was about 20, 25 foot deep. I didn't reach bottom. I couldn't get to the bottom. Amen, couldn't shove myself back up top. I said, dear Lord, what am I going to do? Amen, you got to remember, amen, when I was a boy, 
boy, I, I could swim. Come on now. I, I could swim good. I could about swim, amen, like a 65-pound rock with floaties on it. Come on, somebody. That's how good I could swim. Some of y'all get that tomorrow. You ain't paying attention. Amen. Hallelujah. I could swim about as good as a 65-pound rock with a floaty on it. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I just went, amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. I thank him even today if I saw him. Hallelujah. My best friend was there. Hallelujah. We, we always swam there, fished there together. Amen. He saw me struggling. Amen. Thanks be unto God. He jumped in after me. Praise God. He got on that bottom. He pushed me up. Amen. He grabbed me. Amen. And dragged me up to that shore and swimming as hard as he could could amen when I couldn't swim somebody got in and helped me praise God I'm so glad Jesus got into the deep with me some of you you're out in the deep end where you shouldn't be this morning sins took you a lot further than you ever wanted to go Come on now. Sins took you down an evil road. Sins took you down a dark alley and beat you half to death and has left you half dead. But you're here this morning. There's hope. Praise God. My goodness. Woo. Hallelujah. Amen. I was in over my head and you are too with sin just like I was. Amen. In that deep part of the river when you're playing around with sin you'll always get in over your head. I don't care what lie to hell has told you. You'll always get in too deep. You'll go too far. Come on now. It starts with just a little sip. It starts with a little bit of pornography. It starts with a little bit of problem. Come on now. And you get in over your head. I know what I'm preaching about this morning. I've been there, done that. Come on now. It just starts with a little bit of a tug on a joint. It just starts with a little line of coke. Come on now. Oh, a little bit will go a long way with the devil. Amen. And then you get out to the deep end. But thanks be unto God. Amen. It's a terrible thing. Drowning is a horrible tragedy. I had almost drowned if somebody not have been there I'm going to tell you amen I'm here this morning amen I'm preaching you this gospel God sent me here God spared me in that river to tell you this morning that Jesus wants to save you Jesus wants you to swim ain't you glad he's looking for you this morning next time the devil says don't nobody care about you and you're going to go eat worms like the old saying says you remember Jesus cares about you I said Jesus cares about you when your family don't love you no more when your best friends turn their back on you amen when, when Buddha don't work for you when Muhammad won't work for you when all this other isms won't work for you there was Jesus oh hallelujah that one that can swim real good is there for you this morning Woo, glory to God you know disobedience will cause you to sink like a rock Disobedience. You remember the prophet Jonah? Anybody ever heard of prophet Jonah? Jonah. Jonah would have sunk down to the depths of the sea if God wouldn't have prepared that great fish to swallow him up. Jonah was ready to give up. Jonah just was ready to die. Now, I know we pick on him an awful lot, but I can tell you right now, what if God go, told you to go preach to people and tell them to repent or they're going to die? And these people, amen, got skulls, amen, at their gates post. And they kill people. And they're, they're a heathenistic people. And they're very murderous people. That's what Nineveh was of that day. Nineveh was so rotten, amen. Hallelujah. That buzzards fly over it and hold their nose. It was so rotten and wicked with sin and, and disparity, amen. Jonah said, I ain't wanting to go there, amen. He took another ship. God told him, arise, go to Nineveh, preach to that great city. Tell them I'm going to destroy it if they don't repent. Jonah went the opposite way. God on the wrong boat, amen. He was trying to flee under Tarshish, go to a different place, amen. It was a disobedience unto God, amen. Jonah would have just sunk, amen, when the mariners, amen, they said, dear God, this sleeper that's down here, he's asleep in the boat. And when all the winds are raging and the waves are beating the boat, they said, why has this befell us? Let's wake that man up down there. Jonah's asleep, he don't care, amen, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, God's trying to wake you up this morning, amen. Jonah, God's trying to get your attention, amen. Except God, amen, the moves on those mariners, those other people in the boat, amen, that crew of that boat, and they say, man, what's going on here? Jonah says, it's all my fault. You know when you disobeyed God, don't you? Jonah says, it's all my fault. The God I serve caused all this. Unless you cast me overboard, you're going to die. Jonah, I believe Jonah would have just let him throw him overboard and it just put a bag of rocks around my ankles, put some concrete tight to my ankles, and let me just sink right to the bottom and let me be done with all this mess. How many times did the devil tried to do that to you? 
How many times disobedient done that to you? Come on, somebody. And you just want to be thrown in. But thank God, God moved on a big fish. Come on, somebody. Thank God, God had a plan. God knew what he was going to do. God knew, knows when you feel like giving up, when you feel like you can't go on, God sends deliverance. Though he's got to keep you three days and three nights in the well's belly. Though he's got to keep you in the belly of hell. As Jonah said, out of the belly of hell, cried I. Oh, God, get a, God got a hold of him there. Amen. You know why that took place? Amen. God could have just let him perish. Amen. But how many would have perished if Jonah would have had his way and just sunk down into the water? You hear this preacher this morning. God spared him so other people could be spared as well. It, it's not only you that's sinking down into the deep, but other people are going to drown with you. It's hurting other people's soul. It's hurting other people's lives. Sin causes death every time. And not just your life, but other people around you that care about you. Amen. Jonah didn't care, but God cared. Jonah had a problem. Very disobedient man of God, amen. But God, amen, said, dear Lord, none of us going to die, none of us going to perish. Dear God, they got a lot of cows there too. At the end of the book, he said they ain't got much cattle. They got a lot of kids there that never knew no better. Come on, Jonah. You don't want to go do a VBS for these youngins? You don't want to go do a children's church? Come on, somebody. Amen. Dear God, you're going to disobey me. It's not only you that sinks down, but you're going to drag others with you. Come on, amen. If I can influence you to go to heaven with me, I can influence you to do evil with me and bust hell wide open with me too. Come on, somebody, amen. Jonah, amen, was disobedient. Disobedience will cause you to sink down, amen. Oh, my goodness. Just look at the difference between obedience and disobedience. You see the apostle Paul, amen. Hallelujah. He's in a boat, but he's swimming to shore. Jonah's in the boat and they throw him over. Don't care if he dies or not. He's ready to sink and ready to sw not swim. Amen. But Paul said, my goodness, don't kill nobody. Let everybody swim to shore. Hallelujah. Because he's been obedient to God and God's done told him there ain't no hair on anybody's head going to perish on this boat. Praise God. I'm going to tell you, you walk in with God and you're obeying God. There's not a hair on your head that's going to perish. Come on. God's got your back. Amen. I thought about Jesus in this. In Matthew 14, 26 says, And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come un unto the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith. Wherefore did thou doubt? Amen. Why did you doubt? Amen. I want to tell somebody this morning, amen, as I ask you the question, are you going to sink or are you going to swim? Amen. Je Peter got his eyes off of God. He got his eyes on the wind. He got his eyes on the waves. Come on now. He started to sink. When you get your eyes off of God, church, amen, you get your eyes on man, you get your eyes on the devil in this rotten world, you're going to sink every time, just like brother Peter did. But thanks be unto God. Hallelujah. Jesus don't never sink I said Jesus don't never never ever sink amen he can walk on the water praise God oh hallelujah amen and if we keep our eyes on him we can walk on water with him we'll never sink he said, amen. he said you'll never amen go under for going over hallelujah I'm telling you amen get with the sea walker get with the one from Galilee amen get with Jesus hallelujah you don't have to sink this morning you don't have to, have to let the enemy and the sin drag you down. Amen. You can walk with Jesus. Hallelujah. <sighs> Glory to God. Before I conclude this message this morning, I want to explain something to you. Are you going to sink or swim? I had a dream Saturday morning. Woke up, thought I was having a heart attack. Heart about to beat out of my chest. That's where this message come from. God woke me up with this. About 6, 7 a.m., about time to get up. God knew what I could handle in the dream, what I couldn't handle in it. I was giving somebody a very sound counsel. I was warning somebody 
in this church. I was warning them. I was pleading with their soul. I was saying, dear God, it don't have to be like this. God can help you. Everything you can imagine, I was throwing it out. I was pleading with their soul. Pay attention to me here. This could be you this morning. Don't be looking around. I'm serious. I know when it's God. God, I was begging and pleading. Some of y'all were there too. I'm pleading with this individual, this person. And they wouldn't hear nothing I had to say. Wouldn't have listened to none of you either. That was stubborn, heady, high-minded, in rebellion, and turning against God. I said, no. And it told them exactly what they needed to do. And we were on a pier, and they jumped off in that water. They jumped in. I saw kicking and swimming just for about a half a second. I don't even think it was kicking and swimming. I think it was the water splashing up as they went down. And your first instinct, you, when you see that, you know somebody going to take off and do the backstroke or something. I looked around. A couple of seconds went by, and that person, I didn't see nothing but a little bit of ripples in the water. And it was way out. It was out in the deep end. I mean, when they jumped, they jumped. It was a big jump, a big leap. They went way out in that deep end. And I went around to another dock, another pier, and I kept looking for them. In that dream, I was looking for them. I was like, come on, I was waiting for them to get out in the water, and I was going to preach to them again. You know how these preachers are. I was going to give it to the same thing again. I, I could feel that unction from the Holy Ghost in that dream. And I'm ready, to, I'm ready to tell them and help them, and I'm ready to help them with a helping hand to get up on that dock. And I look around, and I, I can't remember if Brother Ken or Brother Tyler, another couple of men were there, Brother Bobby, I think you did, Brother Jake. Amen. I said, I said, did they come up on the other side? Did they come up on another dock over here? It was a couple of docks. Maybe I just missed them. Spirit of God let me know I ain't missed nothing. It was like I could feel God telling me they're sinking. They're drowning. They're going deeper than they ever wanted to go. That's what sin will do for you. They're sinking down. I didn't see bubbles. I didn't see nothing else. I ran back to the other pier. I'm running. I'm, I'm running with all my might. And I'm saying, come on, guys. We got to get this person out of here. And I'm just about to jump in after them. And, and in my mind, I know I'll never find them. I'll never be able to find them. It's too black a water. Sin's got a dark water. It's too dark. It's too far out there. I'll run out of breath before I can find them. I woke up grieved like I haven't been grieved in a long time. Many people, many people over this last year have sunk. They ain't swimming this morning. Some of you, you're barely keeping your breath. You're barely staying afloat. Just coming to church every now and then, junk ain't going to cut it in this last day. You hear this, Pastor? Dear God, you tighten up. You understand me and the Holy Ghost? I don't want you to drown. You may think that's hard, but I care about you. God loves you. I love you. You quit making excuses to the Holy Ghost. Ha! Huh. You quit lying to God. Quit drowning. Amen. Quit letting the devil lie to you. You start swimming. I kept looking for that person, Brother Jake. I kept looking. I kept waiting for a bubble. I kept waiting for an arm to flail. I kept waiting for a surge to come back up. Dear God, but nothing ever happened. Listen to me, you with dirty hands this day, saith God. I've seen your uncleanliness. I've seen your provocation. I've seen thy rebellion. Yea, this morning I am hurt. This morning I am grieved. You have grieved my spirit multiple times, saith God. You have turned your back on me multiple times. But yea, I say unto you, you have not drowned yet. You have not died yet. You have not woke up in a lake of fire yet, saith God. I am here for you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I will be thy dearest friend. I will be your Lord and your master in everything that I am that I am. Hallelujah. Ha. Ah, Thus saith the Lord, I, I have watched over you. I have spared you for this day, saith God. Do not try my grace. Do not try my mercy, saith the Lord. Or it will end in heartbreak and ultimately death, saith the Lord of heaven above. <laughs> 
Utala Makaya, Utala Mashai, Katala Boko. For you say this is why and that is why, but no excuses will stand before me, saith the Lord. I say unto you and I say it loud and clear by my spirit that my grace is sufficient for you, saith the Lord. Stand with me, church. Come on, stand. If you're not standing, nobody looking around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want you to sink. I don't want you to drown. Dear God, I love you. And I love you because Jesus loves you. Or I wouldn't even be talking to you this morning. God cares about you. God loves you more than you love yourself. You've been awful mean to yourself. You've, you've handled your soul very careless, carelessly this day and days before. Don't do it again. Choose Jesus this morning. God wanted me to ask you the question today. Are you going to sink? Are you going to swim? I believe God's made it very vivid, very clear. Maybe you find yourself not swimming as good as you used to and you're going down. Maybe sin's got you out in the deep end where you can't touch bottom and come up for air. And you're in a state of panic today, deep down in your soul. Maybe disobedience has you where you don't even care anymore. And you're about to sink and it's going to hurt other people as well. The good news is that Jesus is here and he's willing to save you and he's willing to pull you up. I want to ask you this morning, if you feel like you're about to drown, you're floundering around and your muscles are getting tired, you're taking on water, you can't touch bottom, sin's got you in too deep, you don't know how to even fix the situation, that's you, you should have done been in this altar. Come on, don't miss your opportunity this morning. Get it right and get good. Get it right with God. I feel His Spirit striving with you. Don't resist the Holy One of Israel. Let God help you. Ah, for my spirit shall not always strive with mankind as it does this day, saith the Lord. I say unto you, time is running short. Time is winding down. Yea, I know the hour, saith the Lord, your Father in heaven above. <laughs> I know the exact time. I am waiting upon thee this day to not kick against me, but to walk with me, saith the Lord. Come on, that's you. You need to come. Holy Ghost is talking to you. God's word has spoke to you. Please act upon it. Please start swimming. Dear God, I've watched God plead with people. I've watched God stand with outstretched arms with people. I've watched people turn their back and resist God so much in this rotten day we live in. When God's got a great plan for you. God's got help for you. God's got freedom for you. God's got victory for you. And it's all found in Jesus' holy name. Come unto him this day. In Jesus' name. Come on, church. Come on. Find your place. Come on. There's a little bit of room on this apron over here. There's some others scattered around there. Pray at your chair if you got to. Come on. Seek the Lord while he may be found. This is about you and Jesus this morning. This is about you out in the deep end. You need the, a Savior to come in and swoop you up. You need somebody that can walk on the sea. Has somebody that can take you to dry ground that you perish not. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Sing it, Sister Becky. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. That's you this morning. Come on. God's here to help you. God loves you. Jesus bled and died for you and rose from the dead for you. He can help you today. You know what to do, but you choose to do it not. Oh, God, help us this morning. Bless God. Bless search you. Bless you.
to put 